I don't know about you guys, but my virtual reality headset has been collecting dust for the better part of two years. Every now and then I'll whoop it out to play Skyrim or Pavlov, but then put it back in its place for it to decompose even further. Now let me explain something. Virtual reality is really f***ing fun. I think everybody needs to try it at least once because it's such a unique experience. Actually shooting a gun, feeling the vibration in the controller, and getting a kill because you aimed good makes you feel like an absolute gunslinger. I mean, the last time I felt that gunslingish was when I was pissing in the McDonald's urinal and Notice the sense screen text used the same font as gun from 2005. I would snort this thing if it was a substance, but alas, it's a game console that delivers an incredible experience. So if it's really as good as I say, then why are millions of virtual reality headsets rotting away as I speak? And that would be because VR in its current state is incredibly inconvenient. If you play too much VR, your head is bound to get tired from supporting that extra weight. Your eyes will strain, and it starts to get tedious taking it off, then putting it back on whenever you need water or need to piss. Not to mention the inevitable headache if you're on it for more than an hour. I'm somebody who's very prone to motion sickness. Shout out to Max from the fifth grade when I puked on you on the bus ride home. I remember my first day owning a VR headset, I knew that it would be my kryptonite, so what I did was I played on it until the battery died. I got super sick, I got a really bad headache, and I threw up, but as a result, I am now immune to it. But nobody wants to have to go through that just to get used to a video game console. Now, virtual reality is really immersive, but only when you're standing still or sitting down in game. I refuse to use the teleportation controls on VR because it's just too weird, but walking around really kills the immersion. You're probably saying, well, Justin, some people use treadmills and there's tech being made for that purpose, but it's not about that. It's about the fact that there's so many things you need to do just to make sure everything works right. You gotta make sure your space is clear, everything is charged, batteries are in, and that's speaking from somebody who uses Oculus Quest 2. With the Valve Index, you need to have cameras set up in your room just for the tracking to work. And it's not like these are massive deal breakers or anything, but after a long day of work where all you want to do is just relax and play something, it does make you think twice about whooping out the headset when you know you have to do a few things to get it started. None of this is virtual reality's fault. It's super impressive tech, and I love that it exists. But motion sickness and slamming your hand on your desk by accident doesn't mix very well with everyday gaming. <laughs> Virtual reality has come a really long way though. It might be minorly inconvenient to set up now, but at least it's not the Sensorama, which was this fat box. Unlike the portable virtual reality headsets we have today though, it simulated smells too and even wind. And on a more well-known note, see, the Nintendo Virtual Boy was released to all of North America in August of 1995. It was portable and capable of handling 3D graphics with a catch of it looking like this time of the month. Obviously, it was just way too early on in VR technology to be a success, but it was a great achievement for its time. They also go for about $1,000 now, so if you have a thousand or so dollars you desperately want to throw away, go ahead and get yourself a Virtual Boy. Today, virtual reality is a lot more common in households, and with a bunch of people owning these things, you'd think the system would have a lot more games, right? No! VR and PlayStation 5 both have the modern day Sahara Desert of video game libraries. The reason is because one, the standard for video games has gone up drastically, so making a game for PS5 and justifying it on such powerful hardware is a much more daunting task than it used to be. And as for virtual reality, making an immersive VR game is hard, man! The thing about VR is that you don't want your game to use buttons for interactivity, because then there's no point of it being VR. You want your game to be physically interactive, meaning you actually have to reach out and grab things to keep the game going. You also want to make sure your character can move around, but make it seem as logical as possible. Some games have tried different ways to approach movement, like Ellie Noir VR, having you swing your arms back and forth to simulate walking, but it kind of makes you feel like an idiot when you do it. However, the driving in that game is absolutely awesome! Also, being able to see your character in VR is a little bit weird, so some games have it so that only your hands appear, and personally, I like this more. It's much easier to get immersed as your character. Job Simulator is a game that is perfect for VR. The entire game, you're standing still, and every single thing is interactive, and there's absolutely no use of buttons throughout the entire experience. A game that is terrible for VR was the port of Fallout 4. The weapons reload themselves, which looks really weird, and another really goofy thing is that the game shows your controller instead of your hand when you have a weapon equipped. Obviously it's a port and it wasn't built from the ground up for VR, but it's a great example of how not to make a VR game. I've been having fun with Population 1 recently. It's a battle royale game built for virtual reality, and it's really fun. There's absolutely weird stuff 
stuff in the game like sniping and throwing grenades. Also the annoying crosshair that tells you where you're going to shoot. But other than that, it's really fun. A big part of the game is climbing. And even though you're just moving your arms in real life to do it in game, if you do it for a while, it gets pretty tiring actually. And another big part of the game is gliding where you have to hit a T pose and lean your body where you want to go. It's just... It's just awesome, dude. I spent my Sunday afternoon with Cyberboy ripping some rounds of Population 1, and I'm gonna play you guys some clips, and you can watch the video from his perspective on his channel when it comes out. So, so you know how to shoot in this game, right? You go... Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. This is insane. We are so cracked. We are cracked! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! I saw that. That was insane. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I hate having a massive cut. Just the only way we're gonna get through this population match is working together, being a team. And trust. Trust. <laughs> <laughs> trust. Right oh. down there. You should probably. I oh, know we should probably go and get them or something. All right. They're like right here. Yeah. Oh, that was crazy. Yeah, me too. Are you wearing any pants? <laughs> Hello. Oh my god. <laughs> I freaking love VR. It's like heroin. Not nearly well, I told as you good. about doing heroin. We're not allowed just... to do that. Yeah, but you know, YouTube ad rep. Is now Hello. Oh, good. Right now, VR gaming is in its headset and controller phase. The technology will probably remain clunky for the next decade or two. I'd say that the adult in home tech right now is computers and cell phones, while VR is in its edgy teenage phase listening to My Chemical Romance and the Used, where it doesn't really know what it is, and it absolutely doesn't know where it's going. And Elon Musk's microchip is the sperm cell to possibly one day achieving an actual metaverse. My friend and I have had a few conversations about the hypothetical that one day something like Sword Art Online will actually happen, and we've both agreed that we'd be cool with it. I think there's some underlying gaming addiction problems there. Aside from blind theorizing, virtual reality in its current state can't even evolve that much farther. Sure, we have gear that simulates getting shot at in the stomach, or even maths for VR walking, but that just means it's another thing to set up before playing. VR is extremely fun, but it's also very clunky and inconvenient. And also, one more thing. Where the f*** is San Andreas VR, man? Mark Suckernuts announced it back in 2021, and since then, we have heard nothing about it. Aside from the update in 2023, saying that there is no update about its development, but it is still in the making. I got an Oculus Quest 2 just for San Andreas VR, so hopefully it comes out at some point because virtual reality GTA sounds great. Even though a lot of this video was criticizing virtual reality's current shortcomings, I still do recommend getting a headset if the games interest you. I don't regret my purchase at all. VR is a lot of fun, and I'm excited to see how this technology evolves in the future. Most importantly though, what do you guys think of virtual reality in its current state? Is it worth it or is it just too headachey for you to enjoy? And one more absolutely loaded question, what is the future of gaming? Make sure to leave your answer in the comments below and I'll respond as soon as I possibly can. Of course! Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video and make sure to have a good one.